Fitzek. In this video, I'm showing you how to edit a Holy Grail time lapse sequence and rendering it all within LR Time Lapse 6. Before this, we had to go from LR Time Lapse to Lightroom back to LR Time Lapse to render out the video or use another application like After Effects or Premiere to render out these videos. Uh, no more. So today, I'm going to show you how to edit, deflicker, color grade, and render a high resolution time lapse Holy Grail video all within LR Time Lapse 6. Let's go. Last night I shot a Holy Grail sequence using a fullography device, one that I got from years and years and years ago, and it did an okay job. It messed up a little bit later on, as you'll see in the sequence once it initializes. But what we have here is the raw sequence, 649 items, about 20 gigs in size. We're just going to drag that into LR time lapse. And the first thing that happens here, it is loading the EXIF data and it's generating previews from the embedded files that are inside the raw files. These are Canon files, shot it on my 62, which is, I would show it, but it's behind me over there. As you can see, there's a little bit of flickering, but generally across the board that seemed to be going smooth until I tried to adjust the settings of that little fullography device here, and then it just went up and down and up again and then down again and for some reason at the very end it uh, went too bright again as well which I don't know why that's happened but um, what are we gonna do here well we're gonna be editing fully internally in LR Time Lapse Pro 6 so keyframes wizard I'm just gonna create about 10 yeah about 10 keyframes click the save button and now that is going to add these diamond blue keyframes here, which normally now I would go to Lightroom, but as I mentioned, we're editing fully inside LR time lapse with this new panel in here. So first of all, let's set a custom white balance. I'm gonna up the exposure a bit. The thing is, you have to let it load every time. Um, it generates a new preview from their raw file, which you know what happens in Lightroom as well, but it's slightly faster and your resolution is a little bit better in Lightroom. But I'm going to be adding some vibrance and saturation as well. Uh, that's too much. That looks very bright yellow. I'm going to add a little, a little more of that. Okay, that looks good. Now I'm going to hold shift and click this button here, which says sync to next keyframe, shift plus click syncs to all next keyframes. So all the edits that I've applied to this first blue keyframe are now going to apply to all the other ones as well. And pretty much the only other adjustment I wanna do is maybe the exposure later on in a keyframe. I'm going keyframe to keyframe, just checking, that looks good, that looks good. That looks a little bit bright, but doable, that's fine. But here that between this keyframe and that keyframe, I want the temperature to drop quite a lot. I'm going to go to 3600. Yeah, maybe a little bit more. And then I'm going to sync that to the next few keyframes. And then on that next keyframe, I'm going to drop it down to 35-ish, which is my final temperature that I want. That looks nice. Sync that to the next keyframe, and that is step one done. Now we've only edited these blue keyframes, right? The photos in between are haven't been touched, so now you click this auto transition button, and that applies the edits between all the other photos. And what happens next, depending on your system, this can be quite taxing. As you can see, this Adobe DNG converter pops up and disappears, it is going to build updated previews from these raw files. It's like a pre-render almost. And on my system, this doesn't take too long. So we're looking at about four and a half or five minutes for a sequence of 640 photos. As you can see, this is going fairly quickly. So we'll let this finish and then we'll have a look at the deflickering step. Bing, right on. So very clear to see where the little device messed up because before that it was doing very very well minimal flickering uh, just adjusting uh, what has it been adjusting shutter speeds 
ISOs? Small amounts. Oh, it's like almost dull ramping. Oh! Skip the frame here. Oh no. Uh, this is, by the way, very useful in our time lapse. This interval column shows you when something's off. A photo is missing from this sequence, as you can see by the name as well 4840, 4842, because there was a uh, shot that I knocked the camera somehow. Um, not sure how I did that. You know, all these years in still mess up every now and then. The joy of time lapse. Uh, but besides that, yeah, interval is all smooth and um, flickering is almost not there. But here it is there. So now what do we do? The next step is the visual deflickering. And you just click this button, apply a smoothness curve, and it's a pretty, pretty smooth sunset. Multipass deflicker, two passes is what I usually do. More deflickering, and then you hit the apply. And then it's going to rebuild those previews, keeping the visual image of the photos in mind. Uh, so it's not just basing it on the settings that it normally would in a Holy Grail time lapse. It is basing it on the brightness, overall brightness of these images. You can also set a reference frame, which is a, a little square that you drag inside one of the photos that you can use but because there's planes, etc. flying through that might affect it and we're just gonna have a look and see what this looks like. This is often pretty, pretty quick. And you see it's gonna counteract that extra brightness that was induced by the device from the pink line. It's gonna counteract that with the orange line, but this is not good enough just yet. I'll wait for this to finish and then I'll show you how we're going to fix this and this bit at the end here so it's fully smooth and flawless. Pass one done, now starting multi-pass the flicker two out of two. And as you can see, as I mentioned, this uh, pink line has gone down quite a bit already. See what happens on the second pass. And then I'll show you that you can de-flicker instead of doing the whole sequence time and time again, you can de-flicker just the area around it and then applying or refining the deflicker for that. But let's wait until this finishes for the rest of the video. Right, done once again. Let's hit play. That looks pretty damn good. But what happens here? Still goes a bit brightened down and at the end as well. So what do we do? We scroll to right before where that happens here. And you can see the changes here with these uh, these gray areas. They just look different. So you select a few before, a few after. Hit the visual deflicker button again. Just do three, pa four passes. Multi-pass deflicker, accuracy more, and then hit refine. And then it's gonna remove the previews of just the photos that you selected here. Whoa, scrolling going crazy. And it's gonna rebuild them. And doing pass one of four, that's already brought that down quite a lot. So it's increasing the strength of the deflicker to try and get those raw files in line to get a smooth result. And this is the beauty of LR time-lapse. Some really accurate deflickering, which I haven't been able to replicate in other softwares. I guess what you could do is go manually in Lightroom Classic manually go and see what the difference in exposure times is or exposure values and then bring that down but it's just nice to have it like this let's see here the visual luminance goes from 322 to 322 324 322 so that's all pretty darn close so if you hit play if you'd play on that there's still some there right here so what do we do Hit that refine button again. Boom. Let it build. Let it cook. And see, it's adding quite a lot of the flicker in this column here as well. Can't see a thing. Very smooth. Also, if you look at the jumps in um, brightness, they're here as well. Like that, that latitude or the, the, the size of that. And that smooth as heck. Now let's go and fix this last one. Visual deflicker. Let's do five runs, see what happens. Hit refine. So it goes up a little bit. Let's select some more photos in front of that. Hit the visual deflicker. 
and change that smoothness curve and hit the refine button again. And hopefully that brings it down. There's a little bump here that I'm noticing that might be visible, but should be all good. Right on. This is now a smooth holy grail shot, fully edited in LR Timelapse 6. And now we're going to export and render this. So I select this folder here now and hit OK. And now we're going to go over the settings real quick. I want a ProRes file. I want it in source resolution. I want it very high. It doesn't have to be ultra high. That's going to be too big of a file. 422 color sampling. Oh yeah, 25 frames per second and one on one speed. You can adjust that to whatever you want. It's actually quite useful if you go like that. Um, Fuel is illegal and standard color space. You get this thing here and this is where you are slightly limited with LR time lapse internal exporting because it uses JPEG files as intermediaries, which is an 8 bit format, which means for each RGB pixel you get 2 to the 8th. Uh, color possibilities, so that's 256, whereas 10-bit video, you get 10 or 2 to the 10th, which is 1024, so times that, you go from millions to billions or trillions of colors, depending on how much you go upwards in bit depth. So 8-bit is on the lower end, and this might induce banding in the sky, which is an artifact from low bit depth or high compression video. And it's also limited to Rec. 709 uh, with this export setting currently. I've made a video about wide color spaces or wide color gamuts previously, um, which you can find on the playlist, of course. Now, what you want to do here is you could force the aspect ratio. You could export, but why would you do that? Just use the full resolution. You can add motion blur. I'm not going to do that here because there's not really anything to motion blur. The sky just goes dark. You can add some sharpening, add a copyright overlay, whatever, but just use the settings that I'm showing you on screen right now. Hit export and render. And now it's gonna create an intermediary sequence of JPEG files. And then from those JPEG files, it's going to create a high resolution ProRes file, all from within LR Timelapse, which is obviously a new feature. This is great. You don't need Lightroom Classic. You don't need a video rendering uh, software like After Effects or DaVinci Resolve. Now, I have had the question how to use LR time lapse with DaVinci Resolve because people want to do their level and ramping uh, and deflickering in LR time lapse before taking it into DaVinci Resolve. So, if you would like to see that video, let me know down below. I'm gonna finish because I've already done this, I've tested, I always test all my videos before recording them, so it takes me a long time, but then I know it all works. Um, I've already exported this. I'm gonna finish with showing you the before and after, the straight out of camera from the JPEGs and the finished sequence from LR Timelapse. As you can see, quite the difference, isn't it? Now, that's all I got for you today. If you have any questions, drop them down below. If you wanna learn how to time lapse like a pro, like me, check out my eBooks and my paid courses. They are fantastic and it's my main income for this channel. So you can also become a member from one pound or one dollar a month, which is great. All right, I've got a cold. I'm feeling a bit crappy. You can probably hear that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna log off. Thanks for watching. May the clouds forever be in your favor. Goodbye.